Hey, this is Jordan, and this is your Precious Metals Video Market Update. This is being recorded on Tuesday, July 27th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me today. And in this video update, I am going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to take a big picture outlook of where we are with gold in this correction and where we could be going. And uh, I think that's going to be uh, more helpful to people than just going over the short-term technicals of the sector. So starting off, you know, my big picture view is that the real bull market in precious metals, it really hasn't started yet. And that's because even if you go back to the bottom five, six years ago, five years ago in 2016, it's since that point, precious metals have done well, but the stock market has still outperformed. I mean, if you look at the gold to the S&P ratio or the gold stocks to the S&P, there hasn't been a clear bull market there. And so if we're looking at um, the gold stocks against the S&P, in the middle there, you can see that's the Barron's Gold Mining Index. That's kind of stronger than the... Um, the Huey, the XAU, and those types of indexes. So that ratio looks a little bit stronger. But, you know, the the recent action that we've seen in the last five or six years, it's very similar to uh, the early to mid-later 1960s. Um, and you can see that uh, at the top of this chart, we have CPI inflation. And uh, at the bottom, we have the CAPE. And that's the 10-year valuation, the 10-year PE ratio for the stock market. So there's a couple of things to take away from this. First, if you look at the CPI at the top, you know, we we know that it doesn't really reflect what's going on with inflation. However, the key is the trend. I mean, look at where it's moving. And so if you look at shadow stats, the trend of inflation in shadow stats is usually very similar to the trend in the CPI. So it's all about direction, where are things going? Uh, you know, we we have high inflation right now, but the market thinks that's not going to be sticky. The market thinks it's going lower for the time being. But anyway, more importantly is look at what happens when you have peaks in the CAPE ratio or when it gets very high. You can see that typically aligns with very important bottoms in the uh, gold stocks since the S&P 500. And so if you look at, you know, I want to make a comparison to, um, if you go back to 2011 around that time, um, in, in late 2009, I think at some point the CAPE got down to 15 times earnings, which is fairly low historically. Um, I mean, it wasn't where it was in 1982 or 1942, but nevertheless, it was pretty low. You know, 2011, it was at 19 times, and that was a decade after precious metals, hard assets had really outperformed. Well, where we are now, I mean, the CAPE is at 38 now. It's basically, it's higher than the 1929 peak it's getting up to the point where it's almost close to uh, the huge bubble we had with the dot coms and the tech stocks, you know, 99 and 2000. And so, you know, the point is at the, you know, at some point with this economic cycle, uh, we're going to start to see, in my opinion, probably stagflation, maybe in a year or two, and then uh, precious metals, hard assets really outperform the stock market. That CAPE ratio will eventually come down. But the thing is, we're not there yet. And if you look at what happened in the 1960s, you know, that decade, we had a near 10 year long expansion. And then the expansion after that in the early 70s, it was only three years long. The bull market in the S&P was only two and a half years. Uh, and if you look at you know, where we are now, I mean, the recession was only a two month long recession. It came after a very long expansion. So this particular economic expansion, I don't see how this is going to last more than three or four years. You know, maybe it lasts four years, but stagflation is probably going to become a problem at some point. And, you know, that is when we should see the start of the real bull market in gold and precious metals. And that's when, I mean, gold's going to go a lot higher than, than 3,000 or 4,000. That's just going to be the first move. But, you know, th this could have been its own video. I want to do my own video on that at some point. But uh, that's my big picture view of where we are. The real bull market hasn't really started yet. And so, um, you know, where gold's building the uh, handle on a very, very bullish cup and handle pattern. I mean, this is a, the cup was nine years long. I mean, I've said this in past videos. 
that's going to take, I mean, that could take 18 months to break out. It could take three years to break out. I mean, it's not something that was going to break out in only a year. I mean, we're a year into the handle. So there's still plenty of time this could last. And I mean, the market made a really significant move. There is some resistance around, you know, 1900, 2000. So it's going to take time for the market to work through that. But uh, nevertheless, this pattern, it's textbook bullish. The right side of the cup, you know, we made a higher high. We went above 1900. I mean, that shows that there's strength in the pattern, uh, that it's stronger than the typical pattern. So very big picture, this setup is super bullish. Again, it's just going to take some time to play out. And with the arrows there, I'm showing uh, the equivalent to the the week uh, to the monthly 40 month moving average, and you can see that that uh, that weekly moving average. That's where we bottomed in 2008. It's where I think we bottomed in 2019, uh, just when the market really started to take off in the last particular move. So you know, keep that in mind because I'm going to mention it on a later slide. But um, you know, worst case scenario, gold could come down and t test that. It's in the upper 1500s potentially. Uh, and so this shows all the, the bull market corrections. I'm not showing the 75 to 76, 47% decline because it messes up the chart. But the, the point here to take away is right. I mean, the black, which is where we are now, that has followed the average, the blue fairly closely. However, um, the average itself is pretty weak. It's on the weaker side of um, the you know, all the bull market corrections. So we are, we are on the weaker side of that. Now there's three particular ones that stand out. There's 2016 to 2018, uh, 1999 to 2001. Both of those were right after the market had its first pop from a major bottom. And then you have on the other hand, 75 to 76. That was after a spectacular, you know, almost six fold rally in the price of gold in, in only, I think it was three years or so. So those are different, and there's there's not huge. I mean, there's not a lot of similarities to where we are now. But I wanted to look at those three, and just look at the statistics of those correction corrections, how long they lasted. You know, the time to the low, and then the decline in terms of price. So you have price and time there, and then how long it took the market from the start of the correction to basically get back to that high. And so, if you look at um, you know, 2016 to 2018, uh, the time to the low, you know, I, I could have put six or seven months there, five months, whatever it was. But, it, it, uh, you know, that market, it did make a higher low, but it really took a while for it to get going. So if you look at the bottom there, um, you know, the time to the high for 2016 to 2018, I, I was being really conservative. I mean, I put the part, the point, in 2019 when it started to break out, but it also got, it, it first got back up to the high in two years. So I'm being conservative there. But if you look at, if we were just to take like a median or an average of those three and apply it to now, uh, it, it would project a 24% decline for gold, uh, which puts it at about 1590, just below 1600. And then you have a low in uh, April 22, which is about eight months away. Uh, and so, you know, gold, gold's already dropped. I mean, it's 20% to the low. I mean, obviously from here, it would be, you know, 1800 down to six. That's more than 10%. That's not insignificant. And we've already corrected for a year. But, you know, as far as time back to the high, I don't know um, how much of a comparison we can make because you look at 75, 76, the market corrected 47%. And then it rallied like gangbusters. But I mean, it, had it, it basically had to double to get back to the high almost. So that's not comparable to where we are now. Even if gold goes to 1600, that's not compare really comparable that time scale. And then if you look at the other two, those were corrections when gold had its first pop after a major bottom. And by the way, all three of these during those corrections, gold fell below the 40 month moving average. It, it, it's, it remains well above that moving average now. And I don't think it's going to go below it. I mean, it's in the mid 1500s. So big picture, gold has a lot more longer term momentum than these three. So I don't, you know, I, I don't want to make a projection and tell you, you know, when, when gold is going to get back up to the high and break out, even though that's the title of this video. Sorry, clickbait. Uh, but 
I do like the um, the potential for the correction to end next spring. I think that's reasonable. And, you know, from there we could see gold. I don't know. Maybe it takes a year for it to rally back up. Maybe it takes six or nine months from that point. You know, that would put it at the, uh, you know, early 2023 or the very end of 2022. I think that's reasonable. But, I mean, the big focus should be, you know, if we continue this correction, I mean, I think – we, you know, we will see a significant low at some point in the coming months. Maybe it's two or three months. Maybe it's nine months. Maybe it's six months. We'll see. But um, this is the, I mean, we can use this information and everything else we've talked about um, as our guide moving forward. And, you know, before you go, I know a lot of you have taken advantage of this, but uh, follow that link. It'll be in the description. You can get a report. This is my favorite stock for the next three years. This is something you can hold. I think this has 10x potential at 2,000 gold. So, I mean, if if gold breaks out, as I think it will, this could be more than a 10-bagger. So I'm looking at stocks that I think can add a significant amount of value uh, over the next couple of years. And then when gold breaks out again, that's going to leverage the gains. So that's, I mean, that's what I'm doing. I'm removing the gold price and looking at what are the companies that have the fundamentals that are going to add a lot of value uh, through discovery uh, or production, production growth, all those factors. If they can add a lot of value that way, then when you throw in metals prices, resuming the bull market, that's how you're going to get 10 baggers. I mean, I think that's the safest way to go about it. Uh, So if you'd like to see a sample of my research, follow Uh, that link below. Leave me some comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was informative and I look forward to doing another update for you guys in the uh, weeks ahead. Thank you.